hello everyone who is interested in fixed propagation. I want to talk about my experience of winter and spring desk grafting and simultaneous routing of fig cuttings. Advantages for this method. Gain in time from 2 to 4 months. Sometimes you can even get a crop in the first year. No losses during winter storage of cuttings in the refrigerator. Rapid reproduction of rare varieties. A high success rate for both grafting and rooting as there are no harmful effects of wind, dust, sun and low night temperatures. Desk grafting or fix simultaneous with rooting can be done throughout the winter and early spring because fig cuttings don't require a long period of winter dormancy. Now at the end of February and my grafts are now in various stages from swollen green bud grafted in February to juvenile leaves in January graft and to fully developed green shoot with leaves on the December graft. All those grafts were made on cuttings, the routing of which was started at the same time as the grafting. As a rule, I use a cheap but grafting. It's simple and effective. But sometimes I use other types of grafting, for example, whip a tongue graft on this plant. It's a little more difficult, but a very effective. I will show the whole process on one of the cuttings. First of all, I wash all the cuttings of stalks and signs under running water with a brush. Then I rinse for 30 minutes in a pink solution of a potassium permanganate. This allows you to get rid of possible pests and diseases to prevent the appearance of mold on the cuttings during the rooting process. After that, within a couple of hours, the cuttings should dry. Now they are ready for grafting. I will need tools, sharp grafting knives. Parafilm body tape. Stationary rubber bands. Labels and marker. Before each grafting, I wipe the knife with an alcohol to prevent possible infection and to remove any sticky fig latex residue. Then I cut off a chip with a good butt. It is not recommended to hold the chip by the cut surface. It is better to hold it by the edges. If the diameter of the scion is more than the diameter of the stock and the chip is wide, you can cut it off a little from one side. Then I cut out on the rootstock a suitable place for a chip of the appropriate size with a small pocket at the bottom.
I insert the chip into the pocket and align it so that the layers of the cambium of the end chip and rootstock coincide on at least one side. Firmly wrap the graft side tightly with body tape while strongly tightening. It's important to control the correct position of the chip. The butt can be covered with only one layer of the tape. The upper cut of the stock is also covered with tape. To prevent drying and mold appearance, I make a second wrap with the tape of the entire stock, except for its lower part, which will be immersed in the substrate. And finally, I wrap the graft above and below the pad with a stretched stationary rubber band for better contact of chip and stock. Now the graft is complete. Let's start preparing routing. I will not go into detail on the preparation of the substrate, bag and cutting, because it's a special, very detailed film on my channel dedicated to this routing method. Now the grafted cutting is labeled and ready for routing. I will go into more details from the next important steps. First prepare a container for placing our plastic bags with cuttings. I use a deep plastic box from IKEA. At the bottom I pour a layer of vermiculite, which I then moderately moisten. I do not water cuttings in perforated plastic bags during the routing period, and this layer of wet vermiculite is an additional guarantee against drying out. In addition, sprouting buds and young leaves will be in humid microclimate of the deep box. The next step is to prepare the rack for routing the cuttings. On the shelf you can lay a layer of paper of cardboard for thermal insulation. 
The most important point is heading the cuttings from below. I use a long 45 watt terrarium mat. It is equipped with a regulator that allows you to roughly regulate temperature. My terrarium mat is not moisture resistant, so I protect it from above with a film. Actually, it's already possible to install the box with cuttings on top, turn the mat in the electrical network, adjust the temperature with the regulator and start routing. But I prefer more precise temperature control. Therefore, I connect the mat through the special automatic relay with a temperature sensor and a temperature controller. The temperature sensor in a plastic bag is placed on a layer of vermiculite. After that, the system is connected to the electrical network. The initial temperature of 20-21 degrees is visible, which is not enough for success. For reliable control, I insert a glass thermometer into the box. Then I set the heating to 26.5 degrees Celsius. As a result, in the zone of color's formation, an optimal temperature is created 25 degrees Celsius. The routing process has begun. We can exhale, but after two weeks we have to mount the lighting system for cuttings. How to make it, I will tell you in my next film. And now, thanks for watching, subscribe to my channel, and together we will watch the groves and ripening of wonderful Israeli figs.